In a world full of awesome content made by creators who are just the best human beings on the planet, comes the world's next hero. He's rock hard, he's stone cold, he's grounded, and he's off on a new adventure the likes of which have never been seen. Follow along as Waiter Lance uncovers the mysteries of the Kanto Pokemon region in a 5e D&D campaign that is sure to excite and delight audiences of all ages. Hosted by your friendly neighborhood Sendoran, listen as he weaves the tapestry of a world that is always full of surprises. Cubones and Catacombs, come along and don't fall behind. Hashtag raw. <laughs> so, Steve. Yes, Brian. How how have you been, friend? It's for the viewers. I mean, obviously, they're not going to know because they get an episode every week or whatever. But we haven't That's recorded true. in two weeks. That's true. It's been a minute. A week and a half. Whatever it's, it's been. been. It's been a quick minute. <laughs> how have you been, sir? One one might call it a minute. Anyway, <laughs> um, cool. I've been alright, dude. I've been playing. I've been playing some Pokemon a little bit. Um, so there's our requisite reference for the episode. There's one of them. Um, we now two yeah. more. That's it. Uh-huh. <laughs> we'll, we'll build them in. We'll build them in. Um, no, I actually, I've been playing a little bit of Pokemon Heart Gold. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I've never played that one before, so it's pretty all right. Um, it's pretty all right. The, th- he says. the thing about it so far, I, I I like it. It's very charming. But the thing that I'm not so into so far is the idea that uh, I'm like. I think three gyms into the game mm. and I'm pretty sure I've seen one Pokemon that is not a bug, normal or flying type. Let's go. Yeah. The Pokemon choices are pretty lackluster so far. That's an RIP. Yeah. You know, it is. What Which it star is. did like, you go with? I went with Totodile. Yes. Um, I love Totodile. He's, he's actually very charming. He's growing on me a lot. So is Croconaw. I know Dude, I've Crocodile sort of, is like the edgy teenager awkward stage. I love it. I know I've sort of voiced my opinion in <laughs> in derision of Croconaw in the past, mm. but I gotta admit, having used him a little bit now, he's kind of starting to grow on me. Dude, for alligator, so cool. I mean, for I like his design. Pretty, no, I love for alligator. I think he's pretty. He's, he's pretty cool. He's, he's very monstrous. Big old wild gator boy. <laughs> if I saw one of those, I would not touch it. I would. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah, no. For sure. <laughs> anyway, I'm like I'm trying to build a team, and it's like I wanted a I wanted a Slugma, mm-hmm. which is a new Gen two Pokemon. Apparently, it's a Gen two Pokemon that doesn't appear in the game until you get to the Kanto region, mm-hmm. according to all the resources I've looked at. Uh, which I don't quite understand how that works. Uh, why make a new Pokemon for a new generation if it's uh, not going to be on the continent where the new generation takes place? Wait, I'm Same. sorry. Can you run that by me again? Yeah. So, so in in as I understand it, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm not. Okay. Gen two, quote unquote. So, like gold, silver, crystal, and then heart gold and soul silver. Yes. You start in the Johto region. Yeah. And then when you beat the Pokemon League in the Johto region, you can go to the Kanto region, which is where Gen one took place. Yes. And you can do the adventure through there again and beat all those gyms and all that shit. Okay, yeah, yeah. Slugma and also Houndour, who are both new Pokemon in Gen 2. They are they, they did not appear in Gen 1. They are new to Gen 2. Don't appear anywhere in the Johto region. You have to go to Kanto to get them, even though that, they're new to the game. That makes sense, I guess. Yeah, I'm not a big fan. I want one. I want a Slugma in my party, but... Do you really? I do. I've never been... Uh, they're, they're fine. I've always thought they were like, oh, if I need a fire Pokemon, it works. But I, I, yeah. I don't know. I don't like his design. He, it's kind of blind. No, he's definitely kind of silly, but it, the only thing is that, like, my... The the Pokemon D&D campaign that I'm in, I have a Slugma on my team. Ah. And so I'm like, I want to get one for, for him and, and make it, like, a little honorary <laughs> honorary Slug Boy. What does he turn into, Slug Shell? Uh, Mag, Mag Cargo. Uh, well, I don't like that name. I forgot yeah, that was his name. It's Magma and S Cargo. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that. But that's yeah. okay. <laughs> so I've been playing that, and that's been okay. Uh, but I've also been doing a Nuzlocke of Pokemon mm-hmm. Emerald, 
<laughs> Boy, is it not going well. R.I.P. What are your Dude, rules? Uh, so, God, now I gotta think about this. My rules are... I hear the gears you, grinding. They're, they're pretty much like normal Nuzlocke rules. Like, you can only catch the first Mon you see on a route. Mm. Uh, you have to nickname everything you catch. If it dies in battle, or, or faints in battle, you have to release it, so it's dead, technically. Mm. Uh, you can't use any items in battle. Like, you can't, like, use potions and stuff in battle. Perfect. Um, and if, uh, no duplicates. So if the first mon you see in an area is one you already have, you get a mulligan. <laughs> yeah. The thing about that is, I had my Trico, who was pretty great, and then I caught a Breloom, mm-hmm. or Shroomish, sorry. I just caught a Shroomish, and I was like, fuck yeah, this is a great team. Shroomish kicks ass, and Breloom's far- part fighting type, which is really great. Uh, and then both of them got knocked out by my uh, my rival's Torchic. Yes. Because I wasn't ready for that fight. Like, I, I wasn't equipped to handle yeah, yeah. that. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> so, right now I'm running with a team of Zubat, uh... Uh, Loud Red, Tentacool, Magikarp, Zigzagoon, and Poochiena. That hurts that's my me. All, that's my all-star team. I mean, and Gyarados is going to f- slap. Yes. Uh, all the rest of them. Tentacruel's not that bad, honestly. Tentacruel's kind of tanky, so that might be helpful. He's, he's beefy, and if yeah. you want to build him as a staller, just like slap Toxic on him. Yes, exactly. And you'll be like, fine. Yep. Theoretically. And the unfortunately the second gym that I have to face is the fighting type gym. Perfect. So <laughs> So half my team is no longer viable for that fight. That's an RIP right there. Yeah, it's not great. Uh but but that that's what I've been playing lately, Brian. What have you been playing? Uh I mean so I've been playing the new Call of Duty with Nick and whatnot. At... Oh, the, the, the Modern Warfare yeah, remake? Yeah, it's not Is fun. It any good? No? I mean, it looks beautiful, but, like, I don't know, man. It's there, There's just... It, it's not even, like, the old days where it's like, oh, man. Like, like, I don't know. I feel like in Modern Warfare 2, when someone went, like, you know, 17 and 0 or whatever... It was like, oh, this is like, a, like 9 out of 10 times, it would either be someone using the one-man army combo, which was really cheesy and make you angry, but the other times would be someone that was just good at the game, and even though you'd be mad, you'd be like, well, I guess he kind of deserved it. Mm-hmm. But in this game, because Call of Duty's been going from like, I mean, it's been like this for a while, but it has gone from focusing on overall gameplay to just the gunplay, so now you could have five attachments per gun. It just, it, every gun can be OP, and I guess, you know, it's like, oh, that means they're all equal, but they're still not. There's still some very obvious guns that with certain attachments are completely overpowered. And, like, when you die, you, you're just like, ah, of course he's using the sniper rifle shotgun. My bad. Like, <laughs> I, I didn't. Rifle shotgun. There's a gun called the 725, and, like, they air quote nerfed it, and you can still literally get one shot from, like, in the game's equivalent of, like, 60 feet. And it's like, well, how do I outplay that? <laughs> and it's a shotgun? Yeah. Lamau. <laughs> it's just the model 1887s from Modern Warfare 2, like pre nerf Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, like, I don't know, the game's super cheesy, and I don't know, it's fine, I guess. So I've been going back to Halo a lot. Nick and I have been going through achievements because yes. Halo's actually fun. That's a fun, good, well made game. It's really good. I'm enjoying that a lot. So that's, I've basically just been doing that and uh, playing Subnautica, actually. I got into oh, that. Oh, really? It's really Tell me about that. It's so good. So. I looked into it initially, like, I think it came out two or three years ago now. And mm. when it first came out, people were like, wow, this is really good, but the story's a little bit lacking. And I was like, ah, so it's just like a standard survival, which is totally fine. But at the time, I was like, you know, I'd like a, I'd like to wait and see what the if the developers give up on the game or if they're going to keep going with it or whatever. And I got it on sale over Christmas, and I just started playing it, like, this, like literally this weekend. And, uh, boy, howdy, is it really good. Yeah, it's, I've heard I've heard only rave reviews about it. It's fantastic. Like the story is you definitely like it. It's very uh It's not giving it away if I say it's obviously you crash land on alien world or whatever. So mm-hmm. there's like the whole mystery of like th- there becomes a mystery of like what are these aliens? There's a whole disease aspect to it and it's really cool. It's really nifty. I like it a lot. I would definitely recommend Subflotica to people if they're is interested. It, is it PC exclusive? 
I don't know. Okay. I don't actually. You know what? That's a here. I will Google it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, there's a lot of like. I, it's weird. It's one of the few games where. I don't know how to put it without saying, like, it, you know how some games, like, I guess Minecraft's a bad example, but you kind of become annoyed with having to go out and collect things, yeah, if they, like, I, for I building you. and stuff. Mm-hmm. That game doesn't do this because the requirements for what you need to build are very low. Like, okay, that's cool. It'll be like, oh, you want to build an entire habitat for your base? It's like uh, for titanium, and you're like, oh, that's actually fine nice yeah so you don't have to spend all day grinding yeah and i really like that's what's kept me coming back because like at first i was like man i feel like i'm all i'm doing is resource gathering but then like once you gather for like you know 20 minutes you're like oh i'm actually out of space and now i need to build shit great (laughs) uh it is on playstation and xbox my friend oh baby it's yeah i would if it goes on sale i would 100 percent recommend you get it it's very interesting fair enough Fair enough. Uh, have you ever played Stranded Deep? No, I know what it is, and I want to. It looks cool, but it also looks buggy as age. That's my yeah, problem. I played it when it first came out, and mm-hmm. it does look cool. There is something appealing about the like lone survivor. Oh, absolutely. Like on an island chain type deal. Mm. But it, I don't know. It just seems like they they didn't. I, I don't even say they didn't put much work into it. It's just like there's it's just swaths of wide open water with like tiny little islands that have like one palm tree and a coconut on it and it's like okay this really isn't a game there's, yeah. there's really there's really not much here <laughs> now I will put a little asterisk next to that uh-huh. saying that I played the game probably five or six years ago when it was in like early release or whatever Mm -hmm. so they entirely could have added a lot more shit to it that i just don't know about yet that's fair Um, but but when i played it i was like this is fine but you know it doesn't feel like there's all that much to do here (laughs) that sounds about right honestly no man's sky minus you know the space ah man no man's sky could have been so good i mean i've heard it's a lot better now i just can't really go back what if no man's sky was good when it came out that would have been awesome it had so much potential, and I did still play it a lot. I can't say I didn't play it, but, like, there was a lot of nothing very quickly. Yeah, I didn't get absorbed into the world and, like, oh, my God, I got to keep going. I would, like, pop a podcast in at, like, 1 in the morning and be like, all right, I'll fucking burn a couple hours on this. Yeah, yeah. I got nothing else to do. <laughs> back, throw back to the time I had a TV in my bedroom. Hashtag yes. Dude, it, it was something. That was that was an interesting summer. <laughs> it, it, it existed. Yeah, it was – I don't know. It was it, – the idea of space exploration, like, freely is so cool, mm-hmm. but it just Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, didn't it's execute. a brilliant idea. Yeah. yeah. Oh, of course. It's a fucking amazing idea. They just kind of... Flopped. <laughs> yeah. It just <laughs> didn't, it didn't work. It wasn't good. <laughs> it didn't work, he says. So, Brian. Ah. You made bread the other day. Oh, I did make bread. And it looked fucking amazing in your Snapchat. I was like, wait, this looks fantastic. Dude, it was pretty good. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I've been into cooking recently, and uh, there's this old Italian man from Orsara, Italy, and he was a professional, like, like I guess he was the cook of his town or whatever, because yeah, I guess the town's population was only, like, 2,000 or something when he was <laughs> there, so he was, like, the, the cook or whatever, and he has mm-hmm. all these recipes, and he was like, look, I'm going to show you how to make Italian bread, and I was like, oh, I'm interested. Like, how do I? Uh, yes, that's awesome. <laughs> and I just, I, I slapped it out, and I got to say. Uh, what did that entail? Uh, it was uh, just... I didn't know this, actually. This was a pain in the booty. I didn't realize there was a difference between regular flour, like all-purpose flour and bread flour. Mm-hmm. So I had to go I out. I also and, did not know that. Yeah, bread flour is more, uh, it's got more protein in it and some other thing I can't remember. It Basically, it, it makes the texture of the bread more chewy because if you make it with all-purpose flour, you're inner dough is going to be more of a cake consistent. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, I do not want cakey Italian bread. That sounds horrible. Yeah, so I had to go out and grab gross. some of that. But it's it's really simple, at least the way he did it, because it, uh, it was literally just like you'd mix everything. It was like olive oil, you know, uh, yeast, obviously, with the flour and everything. The yeast. And then you knead it all together for a little bit. You let it. You only have to let it rise for an hour. And then you, oh, that's not bad. you roll it out into like a little... Uh, 
It's almost like, you know when you play with Play-Doh and you have a yeah. ball and you just roll it and it becomes like a spaghetti noodle? Yep, it becomes you, a string. Yeah, you roll it into that and then you wait another half hour and it gets like nice and floompy and then you just cook it on a cooking stone for like a half hour. Oh, wait, and you have to use an egg wash. Did you did you have a cooking stone? Yeah. Oh, dude, that's fancy as fuck. I mean, not my mom got my dad uh, for Christmas like a pizza set. Like a make oh, your own okay. pizza set, and it came with a cooking stone. I was like, "This is literally perfect." Oh my god! Nice, <laughs> hell yeah! I was gonna say, I figured you used the egg wash on that shit because the, oh, yeah. the outside was like golden brown and oh, gorgeous. It was so pretty. It like was... if you've ever imagined an Italian bread loaf in like a movie or not a movie, but like an <laughs> animated, an animated like whatever, mm-hmm. or, or like a cartoon where it just looks like perfect and like elongated and fucking golden brown and beautiful. That was it. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm not trying to like suck your dick too hard yeah. here, but like I mean. when you Snapchatted me that shit, I was like, whoa. Dude, I'll bucks. make bread for you when you come down. Ah, dog, I'm I would be, like, be honored. Look, I would be honored, my guy. <laughs> I, and I will eat all that shit because bread is one of my favorite I was going to say, I'll make you your own loaf. How about that? Dude, I would be, <laughs> I would be honored, my guy. <laughs> Oh, also, Brian, mm. here's a fun a fun podcast topic. I'm listening. Uh, I saw this meme the other day. I'm going to read it for you because I want to get the wording right. All right. It was something to the effect of I started debating, not me, but like the meme said, like I started debating with my girlfriend whether so, uh, something is soup or sandwich. And that's like, my girlfriend and I have been playing this game called Salad or Sandwich, where you categorize every type of food as either a sandwich or a salad, and it has <laughs> caused some of the most intense discussions in our relationship to date. Okay, I'm listening. So, so, <laughs> so we'll have a podcast segment called Salad or Sandwich. Yes. Salad or Sammy, boy. Uh, uh, uh. I was gonna say, how does it work? Like, <laughs> You just pick like a food, and you're like, you're like shri- shrimp carbonara, salad or sandwich. Shrimp carbonara as a salad. Yeah, yeah, that's that kind of was one the, the the idea I came to. Gotcha. Salad because it's like a noodle noodle shrimp salad with like a dressing of the. Cream said, if there's no like bread or something holding, it can't be classified as a sandwich, right? That's true. So so here's an offshoot of that question: Are pop tarts calzones? No. All right, cool. I don't think so. Why uh, would they be? That's my question. Because it's like a bread filled with filling. It's not savory filling, but it is filling. But, like, I, I, guess, it, yeah, I guess the outside is a bread technically, right? Yeah, it's, it's got it's dough. It's a it's dough. Got, it's, it's got weast, weast in it. Weast. We, we, weast. That's what I meant. Jesus. Ooh, that was loud. Ooh, what was that? My computer yelling at me. It's like, Biddy, Brian, you're an idiot. <laughs> It's telling me I'm a f- idiot. <laughs> <sighs> so, Steve, on the topic of spl- space, oh my Jesus, space exploration. We're, we're keeping all of this in, by the way. <laughs> yes, please. So, mm-hmm. so speaking of space, going back a, a topic oh, to space exploration. Yes. All right. So, I actually have some things to ask you as well. So excellent. Go ahead. So, uh, not super recently. I think I may have actually told you about this but i've been uh basically at my work when i have downtime you're supposed to be like reading or whatever you know in your spare time you're supposed to if if you're not doing anything you're supposed to keep up on like science or whatever because i work in a lab that's kind of cool i mean it's fine or whatever but i've been doing reading i'm like air quote not supposed to i guess um so i've i've been reading up on oh my god I love these badinga dings. Uh, I've been reading up on Mars exploration because I'm Ooh, like, oh, that's cool. I'm ready. I'm and ready. I found a paper. It's very old, so that don't expect anything cutting edge necessarily. Mm-hmm. But uh, I found something from, uh, oh my god, 1997, I think it was. And essentially, it was uh, NASA's like first mock plan for uh, Mar- Mars exploration with humans. And I was in, like, in what year? 1997. Oh, okay. All was right. it when this was published? I thought you said 77. I was like, uh, oh no, what? that'd be a minute. You yeah, know? <laughs> we just got to the moon, and now we're like, fuck it, let's go to Mars. <laughs> Same thing, right? Dude, basically though, right? But like, 
man, the, it's it's really weird we reading these plans because like they seem so viable yet so like like you know the the basic premise is like oh yeah we got to make sure there's cargo we got to make sure there's nuclear reactors we got to make sure there's fail proofs habitats and you're like yeah of course that makes sense and then like they go into the details and some of it's just so ah man it's like how do you plan this stuff almost like i could see why it hasn't quite been funded or come to fruition yet because they were like yeah our plan is to send like two cargo rockets first and then they'll manually land and do their thing. And then we'll send the crew like a year later. And everything will still be on and in standby mode and work perfectly. And it's like, man, I don't know. Like, the, it, when you put it like that, because I didn't think of it like that, where like you have to. For some reason, I thought Mars exploration could be like everything that you need is on like two ships and you land them with the people and they just do their thing. But I guess you'd have to, you know, have everything established first, right? And then the humans yeah. could come after. And it's For like, how sure. do you even, how, I don't know, not only where do you get the money, but literally how do you make sure nothing goes wrong in like the year that the equipment's going to sit there waiting for people to show up? You know, I I think if we ever did get to Mars, maybe not if, because I think given that the human race endures long enough, I think we will get to Mars. Yeah. It, that's probably would be the one of the biggest undertakings in in human history. Oh, not even a question. If the, Def, definitely to this point, yeah, maybe thereafter as well. It's maybe not. Uh, I guess it might be thereafter because you know. I guess realistically, it's impossible to go to another galaxy and have people survive, huh? Like I yeah, mean, with, in duration, with the current technology, yeah, yeah. But um. Yeah, like, the people would have to be gone for, like, you know, two, three years at a time. Like, spend, like, eight months on a ship in no gravity just flying through sp- Like, that stuff's insane. I don't know. No, I, I, it's funny that you bring that up. I actually was going to say something about that. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I was watching uh, Joe Rogan's podcast the other day. And I say watching because I was, like, watching clips of it on YouTube. And he had uh, an astronaut on as his guest, like That's a guy cool. who had been on the space station for like ninety days or whatever. And had, yeah, yeah. Um, there's some other stuff that I wanted to talk about with him as well. But uh, one of the things, one of the things that he was talking about in terms of sending people to Mars mm-hmm. is uh, it's something that you don't necessarily think about is the amount of radiation they would have to endure. Yes, because you know, even even in a shielded you know, even in like a space station or whatever, um, or not a space station, but like a vessel. Yeah, no, like I know a space what you mean. shuttle type deal. Yeah, you know, you're you're ex- constantly exposed to. I forget what the exact term for it is. It's like background cosmic radiation or something like that. Yeah, it's just like solar. It, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking. It's just about. like you're constantly getting. A yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a really, really small amount, but over the, over the, course of how long it would take you to get to Mars and be there on Mars and then get back, you'd increase your chance of, you know, developing cancer in your lifetime by, like, I don't know, 5 6%. Oh, absolutely. Which, which is, you know, seems like a small number. Yeah, but it's pretty when high. You're talk- when you're talking about cancer, it's a pretty high number. That y- After hearing, like, all the stuff that, like, the astronauts have to go through, to, like, because you have to consider, they have to be self-sustaining, so... They yeah. have to not only understand how to do their research once they get to the planet, but they, they gotta all have to how have... survive if shit hits the fan. And not only that, but they also have to... I'm trying to think about how to put this, but they, they, also, they all need to be able to understand every aspect of what's going on, like each of them. Yes. So, yes. you know, everyone has to have a basics in, uh, like, you know, being an electrician or whatever. Mm-hmm. All of them have to understand... Um, Biology. All of them have to have a bit of medicine. All of them have to have a bit of yeah. You got to be really fucking smart to be an yeah, astronaut. That's the. It's crazy. After hearing all this stuff, because you know, as a kid, it's like ah, oh, if I was given the opportunity to go to another planet, I would. And then after hearing all this, it's like oh my god, like I would fuck would up I? so bad. Yeah. I wouldn't do it. There's no yeah, way. Really. Mm-hmm. First of all, I'm claustrophobic. I wouldn't last in the eight months it takes to like get there or whatever. There's no way. Yeah. I'd go nuts. And that's the other thing. They all have to like each other constantly because there's uh-huh. th- there's nowhere to go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you no get privacy. on the planet and then what? Yeah. You're gonna suit up for your, the ten minutes you can go outside and come back in. Mm-hmm. Like, oh man. 
Yeah, no, I feel you. Well, and that's the thing too that I think a lot of people don't realize. It, mm-hmm. Like these, this spacewalk thing mm-hmm. is a long fucking time. Spacewalks yes. are huge. They're like eight hours. What's this? Like, what do you mean? You know, where you put on like when you're on the space station, yeah. you put on your spacesuit and go outside and like do maintenance on the side of the oh, station yeah. or whatever. It's not that's gonna like be quick. Eight, that's like an eight, ten hour process. Yeah, it's, it's like not a like day's oh, I'm gonna put on the suit and go out there for an hour. No, you're out there for a long fucking time. Yeah. I didn't know that. I thought I fucking had no idea. I guess, though, maybe you'd have... It might not feel as long if you're constantly doing something. You don't even have, like, no, no, I the get sun it. I... to see how long it's been, you know? <laughs> right. No, it, you're just out there doing your deal. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing, too, about the radiation, is that you also have to deal with solar flares. Yeah. Which... I feel like that's pretty rare, very, though, to not hit Not very you. good. That's true. No, the solar flare. the solar flare is not that big of a deal and again i'm 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 trying to quote this from memory i i might be wrong about this so don't you know at me if i am mm. but uh I, i'm pretty sure that like when the solar flare is gonna happen like if it's gonna hit your craft or whatever mm. you've got like an hour to get into the shielded spot or you know, or not even that like you know about the flare about an hour before it happens, like an hour before it hits you, and then you just got to hunker down in the shielded spot or you're going to get cooked. How do they, how do you detect one an hour ahead of time? I have no clue. Because aren't no solar flares really, really fast? Probably. Like, they got to be. It's Probably. Slow, I, have no, it's like, I don't know how they It's like the sun detect farting, them. right? Yeah, really. <laughs> but, you, like, you don't have the Earth's magnetic field to protect you from the radiation, so it's like, well... Oh yeah, no. You... Better, better get somewhere safe, or yeah. you're gonna die pretty quick. <laughs> How good is that? Yeah. So, and they'd have to deal with that for like the the year long trip to Mars, and then being on Mars, and then the year long trip back from Mars. I just, yeah. The, there's so much more at stake than is just. I've I, my biggest problem, I guess, is just the the aspect of having to understand everything. I don't know how you could. Yeah. Like, yeah. After coming from a biology background and trying to understand chemistry and biology and then imagining to also have to understand, you know, uh, uh, what's it called? Physics and electricity and math and Mm -hmm. just every like you have to be a jack of all trades, but not in the sense where, you know, in games, when you describe something as a jack of all trades, it's decent in everything, but not particularly good at one thing. No, you have to be the top at everything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there, there's literally just no way I could do it. There, it, there, it wouldn't happen. You got to be one of those genius boys. My small brain, like, oh boy, there's no way. Yeah, same, dog. Same. <laughs> um, so, uh, also on that interview with that astronaut guy, not only was he in the space station for like a long time, he also lived in an underwater habitat Oof. at the bottom of the ocean. For that doesn't sound great. Uh, I think it was two months. Mm-hmm. And it was like, oh boy. I mean, they, you know, we're not talking like Marianas Trench kind of deep. They, no, you know, they but they were like, still. they were like sixty feet underwater in this little habitat, and so like a mini Bioshock. <laughs> yeah, really though. You know, again, it's super cramped, and like there's there's you know a few people there, and um, what was the, the thing point? Of, uh, just to do underwater research. Oh, okay. You know, it'd be kind of the same thing as the space station. Like, you're doing research while you're there. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's underwater <laughs> instead of in space. <laughs> it's just under, under, yeah, that's all. And, like, the guy was, like, saying that, like, uh, he, like, in order to go to the bathroom, like, you know, here, I think this is the first time we talked about shitting on the, on the podcast, <laughs> but, like. Here we go. You would, like, so, no, essentially to get in the habitat, there was, like, a, a section of the floor that was cut away. And and it, you could just, like, walk down these stairs into the water mm. and then leave the habitat. And you'd, like, swim, you know, like, I don't know, however long, like, like 40 feet to this other area mm. where you do your thing. And then, like, come back. And, it, of course, this so this astronaut guy got up in the middle of the night and had to take a shit and, like, swam out and, and did his thing and then started to come back. And, like, at one point he flicked his light on and there was just a giant eyeball staring him right in the fucking face. Jesus, dude. Uh, it was a, it was a Goliath grouper. Oh, those are terrifying. Fish. They are. They're, they're like, fucking 600 pounds. And yeah, they're huge. big. And he, and he was like, yeah. It was like, he's like, I was face-to-face with it and I almost, like, fucking shit myself a second time. And I'm like, dude... <laughs> 
I would have. I was going to say, no one would blame you. That's the thing. That's terrifying. But I, I think one of the most terrifying things about it, so uh, if you guys don't know, the part of being underwater and whatnot is the, the, the water pressure, obviously, you know, is tremendous the deeper you get. And yes. it... When, when you're underwater for too long, surfacing too quickly will give you what's called the bends. Yeah, nitrogen which, expansion. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Nitrogen in your blood, and then it, you know, you have issues with that. <laughs> um, I don't know exactly how it works, but um, being that deep in the ocean for that long, uh, they literally cannot surface. Like if they, if something goes wrong, they can't swim to the surface or they'll die. And it's like at sixty feet down. At 60 feet down. That's surprising. That's to, not that deep. I mean, they it's have deep, to, but... In order to surface, the I think part of the... Ha- when, they, when it's time for them to come up, part of the habitat, like, detaches and slowly floats to the surface over the course of, like, 24 hours. Yikes. To give their, like, you know, blood time to thin out or wh- whatever the fuck. I don't know the terminology, like... Gives give you time to adjust to the pressure. It lets without, yeah, the nitrogen like, release you. from your bloodstream without yep. popping you. Yup, it's like oh god, I don't that that's probably the scariest thing. What do you thing. do for twenty four hours? Probably sleep a lot. I guess you're just floating, man. Mm-hmm. That's got to be awful and claustrophobic. Ugh. Dude, I'm not a big fan. Not a big fan of that idea. Where where was this? Uh, that's I think it was off the coast of Florida. Man, that's yeah. nuts. Yeah, I know. It's it's something. It's something. All right, Brian, would you rather spend 30 days on the International Space Station or 30 days underwater? Probably underwater. Ooh, interesting. Okay. I mean, the space... I'm terrified of heights. It, like, probably wouldn't work for me. I'd probably lose my mind and then go numb for... Like, I'd probably freak out for the first, like, 48 hours, like, in, like, a panic attack, like, freak out, where I'm, mm-hmm. like, shaking constantly. And then after that, I'd probably go numb and be absolutely worthless for the remaining time. <laughs> like, I, I just, I mean, either that or I guess maybe I'd adapt and I'd be fine after like 10 days. But yeah. I, I don't do heights. I could I could see myself being able to handle underwater. I don't know if I could see myself being able to handle up in the sky, literally yeah. falling around Earth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I get you there. I think the scariest part of going to the space station for me would be like, you know, uh, the the rocket trip up there. That's what I like. Like the the uh, shuttle launch. Yep. <laughs> that sounds horrible. Because the those things are those things explode sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> As is mm. evident in past. Yeah. It's man. Everything. You know, that's not like... not that the not that the prospects are all that much better once you're on the station. You know, <laughs> part of that rips off. Y'all get sucked out into space and die. But like, I feel like that's pretty rare. Like, NASA's right, very exactly. good at making everything super safe because it has to be. Yeah. I don't know that... I don't know that I've ever... Have there ever been any, act like, deaths aboard the ISS? I don't think so. Yeah. I, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I don't think it's ever happened. Whereas plenty of people have died on space shuttle launches. Oh, absolutely. That's the most dangerous part. I mean, you literally mm. have a giant sustained explosion under you. Yep. It's only going to be so safe. Like, the biggest explosion, too. Like, yeah. One of the biggest explosions mankind has created short of, like, an atomic bomb. So, Steve. Brian. What's your favorite fast food? Go. Oh, dude, this is a great topic. Shit, man. <laughs> um, gosh, that's hard. Probably. Oh, fuck, man. I, I, I like a lot of different fast food, which is probably not good for me. But um, <laughs> fucking what? never, never, never said it was. So. Exactly. Just that, uh, yeah. Probably, it's got to be either McDonald's or Taco Bell. Really? Yeah. McDonald's can't be um, up there for me anymore. I, I, for a long time, I got sick off of McDonald's. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to eat McDonald's when I was a kid sometimes, and I'd be like, this is amazing. I love it. And then, like. Same. Yeah, when I was a children, um, I was like, oh, my goodness. It's so, this is so good. Deli- this is so delicious. Yeah. Um, And then I. For a long time, I would I would get sick when I would eat it. I'd get like sick to my stomach. Oh, I don't yeah. think I ever threw up from 
Okay, that's not true. Um, <laughs> I threw up once from McDonald's, but that was just because I wolfed down my entire meal in like three minutes. Yuck! I just like I just like <laughs> ate way too much, way too fast, and I was like, Bleh. yeah, yeah. And yeah. I was, you know, and I was a kid, so I had a really small stomach. Um, <laughs> but for a while, I would get sick to my stomach after eating McDonald's, so I didn't eat it for a while until like maybe maybe a year ago, when I was like, I, I just really need something to eat. This is the only thing that's around. I guess I'm just going to have to suck it up and deal with it. Yeah. And I ate it. And I was like, oh, huh, I feel fine. Like, not not fine, but like, yeah. you know, it's fast food. You still feel kind of like groggy <laughs> after you eat it. But of course. I was like, ah, oh, you know, this is, this is, I could deal with this. That's so fair. I'll, I'll get a McDonald's every once in a while. Um, I used to eat Burger King a lot on my way home from, from uh, my job. I never liked job. Burger King. Um, it was never my jam. I think Burger King is decent. I like their Whoppers. I think the Whopper is arguably better than any sandwich McDonald's has. But I've never had um, a Whopper, so it's pretty good. It's 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 got some more interesting things going on than what McDonald's can offer. Their That's fries cool. are not that great. That's what um, I was gonna say. The only reason I like McDonald's now is I get like a large fry, and that's it. <laughs> I will say the uh, the McDonald's sodas slap. Those are so good. McDonald's Sprite and McDonald's Coca Cola just hit differently than other sodas. Do they? From like uh, from other restaurants? Oh, for sure. Uh, I've been, I've been so long. I, I don't think I've been to McDonald's yeah. in over a year now, so I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, and then, um, uh, fucking, oh god, yeah, Taco Bell. Taco Bell. I tried maybe again about a year ago, because like I I had never had it up to that point because they were like, oh, you know. Horse McDonald's meat, ha, ha, ha. gives you explosive diarrhea. Ha ha. Get it? Yeah. It's like, well, okay. I guess I don't want that then. I think I had a, a, a Taco Bell once when I was like 10 mm -hmm. because they were giving away free blackjack tacos on Halloween. So I went and got a free taco and I was like, ah, oh, this is fine, I guess. It's edible. Uh, yeah, it's food. So I went to Taco Bell and I ordered some shit and it was all right. I, again, every time I get fast food, I have this like idea that it's going to be like delicious and amazing and whatnot. It's not. And then, I, and then I go there and I'm like, yeah, this is. No, it's never meant to be delicious. This is fine, I guess. It's meant to be quick sustenance. <laughs> yeah. That's about it. Um, yeah. So I'm not. A, I'm. Yeah, I, I, I guess McDonald's because I know what my order at McDonald's is. It, it, whereas Taco Bell, I'll show up and look at the menu and go like, eh, I guess I'll get one of those. I like their chalupas, the grande or whatever. Yeah, that's the grande tasty. chalupa. I like their their like one cent cheese that they put on it. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, right. It's, it's really bad, um, but it's really good. Dude, I, honestly, my favorite thing at Taco Bell is the ninety nine cent shredded chicken burritos. Like Have I not actually, had them. I actually really like those. Those those are one of the few things on the menu that I think doesn't taste like everything else on the menu. Nice. I feel like a lot of, yeah, I feel like a lot of Taco Bell food is kind of samey. Yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, you know, I'm just going to eat this that tastes like everything else. That they, It's beef and queso and, and that's queso. about it. Yeah. yeah. I'm a big um, KFC boy. I love KFC. See, I haven't had a KFC in my town in years. So oh, I, me neither. I can't get I it. I have not <laughs> kept up on their menu. Uh, it's, I mean, it's still, I, I only get the same thing. I either get the famous bowl or the popcorn chicken. You know, I've actually kind of been interested in what a famous bowl tastes like. It's because, so good. It's their shitty gravy it, with it their shitty looks, potatoes. Looks decent enough. <laughs> it's so good for like three dollars or whatever. It's like yeah, a pound it's, of food for uh, three dollars. I like it right. a lot. If I, I there's a KFC near me, yeah, it'd be bad. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I yeah I I definitely feel like McDonald's has the best drinks because their sodas are really good and you don't like the Baja Blast, dude. I don't drink Mountain Dew, kind of as a rule. It's pretty whatever. It's not near as good as people yeah. make it out to be. If if you know if I'm gonna drink something for the taste, I'm not gonna drink a Mountain Dew. Yes. And if I'm gonna drink something for the caffeine, I'm gonna have an energy drink. So. Yeah, yeah, you know. I see what you're so saying. Mountain Dew kind of doesn't have a place in my life. <laughs> um, you know, here's a fun fact for you, though, Brian. Uh -huh. uh, and for everyone listening at home, I actually know some my, my brother-in-law uh, has for a long time worked as, like, a manager at a fast food place. Uh -huh. Like, he kind of knows that world pretty well. Yeah. Um, and he was a, McDon a McDonald's manager for a while. And so you know how they make, like, their soda, right? They they get, like, the concentrated syrup, and then they, like, mix it with carbonated water in the fountain. Yeah. And then it, you know, comes out as soda. Um, 
so apparently that concentrated syrup is because it's got citric acid or not citric acid maybe it's citric acid all right cool it's got some kind of acid in it uh it's so corrosive that you it's literally like a biohazard yes <laughs> you like if you if you get it on you you're gonna get chemical burns nice like, that's that's, dude, that's just gonna happen yeah, acids uh, are weird when they're. I mean, not weird. I guess it makes sense. It's called acid, but you know, when they hit a certain concentration, even something benign is now like a poison. Right. Exactly. Um, and and apparently each fast food restaurant, well, not each one, but but there's no universal like oh mix you know four parts water with one part concentrate yeah or whatever like each place kind of decides their own ratio. Of how much water to oh, really? how much syrup they make the, to make a soda. I didn't know so that. So that's that's probably why McDonald's sodas are better, quote unquote, because they use a different. They must use like a different ratio. Yeah, yeah, stronger. Yeah. They're like, we're gonna yeah, borderline strong. burn your stomach. But yeah, you like right. It. <laughs> like, but you're gonna like it, <laughs> dude. I I um I had this teacher in high my chemistry teacher in high school. He was a really weird dude. I mean, he was a nice guy. Like he was, just, but he just had a really a weird sense of humor. Um, and he would always talk about uh, soda when he would talk about citric acid. I think it's citric acid. I might be. It should be. That. Um, yeah. So when he's talking about citric acid, he'd always be like, "Yeah, you know, in soda they have citric acid. It gives gives you a little bit of a burn when you drink it, <laughs> and you guys like that." And he would always use that line that like you guys like the burn. Of course. He probably said that twelve times over the course of the year. Let's go. And it's like that's way more than you need to fucking say that. No, no, no. That's the exact amount that he needs <laughs> yeah. to say that. The, the actual he, you know, setting setting goals for himself for the school year. Gotta gotta mention the citric acid thing twelve times. You gotta make it at least fifteen this time. Yeah. Right. Gotta up your quota, baby. Up your quota. <laughs> um, and then in all in terms of fast food, I also. Uh, I've I've eaten at Wendy's a couple of times, and I they're again not great. The only thing that I have an issue with for Wendy's is like, I like Wendy's. I feel like, they're, they're, right. I feel like their burgers are really small. Like the the amount of money I'm gonna spend on getting full at Wendy's is a lot more than I'm gonna spend on getting full at you know another restaurant. So are their burgers? Small? I've only gotten. I always get their yeah. nugs. I love the nugs from Wendy's. Their, oh, their nuggets are actually pretty good. That's a good point. Have See, I don't heard? usually get nuggies, but <laughs> have you ever had food from Sonic? I've only had the ice yes. cream, which is fine. Yes, I have. How's the yeah. food? Yeah, it's about what you expect. That sounds about right. It's it's, it's a fast food place. It, yeah, it's yeah. it's maybe like a quarter step above fast food. Yeah, um, it's all right. I've had yes. I've had burgers from there that were okay. I've had burgers from there that were really dry and gross. And it's like, well, yeah, it's about right. Yeah. <laughs> um, this isn't quite fast food, but do you ever go to Five Guys? I think it's very overrated. I've been there twice. Really, you don't like Five Guys? It's whatever. I mean, no, I, that I mean that's fine. I'm just surprised. I well, love Five Guys. The issue is they were like, this is like literally the best burger. Like a homemade burger is nothing compared to this. And I was like, okay. And then I had one. And I mean, it it tasted like a McDonald's burger to me. Like what? My dad knows how to cook a burger. And like, oh yeah. I mean, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna get a burger from someone that knows how to make a burger, or from like a restaurant that does like a good restaurant, like a sit down restaurant that yeah. does burgers really well. No, no fucking fast food is going to compare to that. It's, I think like, I just had my, my, cause people were hyped it up. You know, it's the best, it's literally the true. best thing ever. And I'm true. like, it's the best thing ever, huh? Mm-hmm. Like I'll give it a whirl. And I took a bite and I was like, it, it's a burger. I mean, it's, I, it's fine. I, I don't know. I try it again, but like, as mm-hmm. of right now, my stance is it's, it's food. It's really not that good to me. I like it a lot, actually. I think it's very tasty. That's cool. And they were one of the first restaurants that I found to introduce that, like, soda kiosk thing. What's that? You know what I'm talking about? No. Oh, dude. There's this thing called, like, it's it's a soda machine made by Coca-Cola. Uh, I think it's called Coke Freestyle. Okay. Um, and I only know that because I used to load UPS trucks for a living, and I... Uh, I had to load the little containers of syrup into the truck that were going to the machine okay. in like in like a certain business that my truck delivered to. Mm-hmm. So anyway, it's like a giant like vending machine, but you put your cup in the slot and then you add ice if you want ice. And then it's got like a touch screen on it where you can pick like 20 different like brands of drink. Okay. Like pretty much anything that's a Coca-Cola product is available. You know, you've got Coke, Sprite, 
you know, or whatever brand of root beer they own, you know, like Dasani, like Fanta, fucking Dr. Pitt, like everything that they fucking have. Yeah. And you like press one of the selections and then it's like, and then you can add a secondary flavor to your drink, like a fruit flavor. Mm. So like if you get a Sprite, you can get a cherry Sprite or a peach Sprite or a lemon, well, lemon lime, but, or, or like, you know, like a strawberry Sprite or whatever. You can add like a shot of flavor to it. Mm. And so you basically create your own like custom drink and then you dispense it into the cup and it's, it's fucking amazing. That's cool. It's like, it's so fucking cool, <laughs> which, you know, I first saw those when I was on vacation in 10th grade, when I was, I was down on the coast in Delaware and like they had them in a five guys and I was like, what the fuck? And then I, you know, like a month later, a five guys opened in my town and I was like, well, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's that baby. Uh, but yeah, it's super, the, the soda machines are super fun. If you couldn't tell, I like soda. Oh, soda's uh, great. I've, I've talked about it a lot on the podcast today. Um, <laughs> soda is delicious and I wish it wasn't so unhealthy for me because, Dude, yes. um, I would drink it a lot. I do mm. drink it a lot, probably more than I should. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I'm a big five guys fan. Uh, I think it's, I think it's pretty good. Nice. Trying to, think, trying to think have you ever been i was gonna say i know you don't travel much um have you ever had an in and out burger no i yeah i've never been to the west coast yeah i had one when i went to la and uh i wish i remembered anything about how it was r.i.p <laughs> i guess that was the impression it made on me that i don't really remember anything about it i was gonna say i think the thing that i've heard at least because mm-hmm. I listen to podcasts with you know creators that go yeah, yeah. have moved to la just because of companies and whatever and the way they describe it is if you're from the area, for mm-hmm. some reason, the hype is, like, unreal. Like, yes. if you're L.A. Yes, born, like, to you, it's the best. But from someone yep. coming from another area, they're it's like, like yeah, it's, it's mediocre. Yeah. It's there. It's there. It's so, not bad. But I, yeah, I don't care to try. I mean, I'll, I'd try it if I went either. there. Yeah, exactly. It's like, yeah, yeah, I'd try it. Yeah. But I'm not expecting anything. Yeah. I feel you, Doc. No, I, I definitely agree with that. You can get it um, animal style. You get it inside four out. Four by four animal styles. Cro- make let cry, it swim. Burn it, let it swim. <laughs> yep. Dude, yeah, I was going to say, that's actually, did you know that that yeah. reference? Yeah. Well, for those of you that don't, don't know, here's a quick little bit for you. That bit in SpongeBob when, when what's his name? Bubble Bo- Bass. Bu- Bubble Bass. You where Bubble Bass is ordering the burger at the Krusty Krab. All those, like, words that he rattles off and then Squidward's like, um, we serve food here, sir. All of those things that he rattles off are actual real ways you can order a burger at in out It's great. Swear, swear to God. Yeah. It's something. <laughs> Let um, me guess, tiny is small salad. <laughs> <It's> like, oh! <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Fucking rip bubble baths. Dude, Squidward was a savage back then. Squidward was great. How good was SpongeBob as a show, Brian? It was fantastic. So good. Amazing. Yes. No, Brian, while we're talking about takeout, mm. do you ever do you ever eat Chinese food? Are you a fan of Chinese food? Chinese? It's 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 all right. I really mm. don't care for it. Dude, I love me some Chinese food. A lot of people do. I like Japanese food more than Chinese food. Japanese is also good. Like, like, have you ever been to a hibachi? Yes, hibachi. Dude, is hibachi incredible. is so fun. Oh my goodness! I we, love wait, it. can we go to hibachi? Oh, Brian, fuck yes, dude. Okay, I'd love that. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Yeah, we could bring. We could like. We I don't know. We'll f- find people to go with. Jake, like. I think I was gonna say even if you just go by your not by yourself but like in a small group they'll yeah, pair yeah. you up with like other other people. So. I was gonna say I went a while back, mm. uh, me and one person, and it was we. It was so unbusy. We got our own little chef. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! It was like oh, this is fun. I think I've been I've, yeah I've been to Hibachi three times in my life and it's every so time good. it was fucking awesome. They're like let me let me cook some egg with some rice. I'm like oh that's probably not that good. I'm like oh my and god. And you eat it and it's like wow this is. This is fucking Phenomenal. amazing. Like, it's too bad it's so expensive. That's true. I get Although, why, but... I mean, honestly, I didn't pay that much for it, like, over, like, another fancy meal. That's fair. Not fancy, but, like, you know, I paid, Higher like, 17, 18 bucks for my meal. I don't I remember, like, I'll be honest, because I paid I for like, both meals, so... That, that would be reasonable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't know what that, like, brown stuff that they put in the rice and noodles is. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, my God. Soy sauce? I think it's laced with, like, heroin. Maybe it's soy sauce. I don't know. No, I I think it's going to be, like, a, like, a 
sesame oil or something like that, maybe. I don't know. It's fucking amazing, though. It's tasty. That's all I can say is, like, wow. Thai food's good, too. See, I... I like Thai food. I don't know if I've ever had Thai food. Maybe once when I was really young. Mm-hmm. Um, do you ever... Have you ever eaten pho? Pho. Yeah, I have had... Yeah. I, it's It's good. Yeah, I like okay. pho, but if ramen is there, I'm getting ramen. Tr- oh, true. I love Guys, ramen. <laughs> if you ever get the chance to go to Mecca Noodle, it is heckin' tasty. Mecca, M E C H A, Noodle. I don't uh, know if we're they, from the East Coast. I yeah, don't know they, if it's they elsewhere. Have a, <laughs> they have a bunch of them in like the New York, New Haven, like metro area. Yeah, it's um, so good. Oh my god, that shit is unbelievable. It's, it's a ramen restaurant yeah like, it's it's a bit of a chain it's like i think there's only like six or seven yeah, places yeah, like though small chain. it's um, so good not only is it really tasty it's cheap but it's cheap and when you run out of ingredients in your bowl and you still have broth they'll bring you more noodles so you for two bucks yeah for like two bucks yeah for some so really you small buy the amount. initial like broth for like it's anywhere from like 11 is like the cheapest to like 14 for the like the whole bowl and then yeah. you run out and they're like oh two dollars a noodle and i'm like Yes. Uh, yeah, bring me like six more portions of noodles. <laughs> I stopped. Here's twelve. In... Here's twelve dollars. <laughs> One day I stayed. Yeah, that's the thing. I stayed. Uh, I had a long day at work or whatever, mm-hmm. so I went to Mecca after because I was like, you know, I'm hungry. I'm not gonna get home until like eight. Let me just eat something. And I went in and I spent like, I, I got like two bowls of noodles and some alcohol. I got some sake because I like sake. Mm-hmm. And they were like, oh, your bill's thirteen dollars. And I looked and I was like, thirteen. Like, did, did they <laughs> mark this white. wrong? And everything was there. And I was like, oh, my goodness. It's so yeah. cheap. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. The cheap, good food. That's that's the place. That's, that's where it, you want to go. That's it. Um, I feel you. I remember one time, not that Chinese food is super cheap, but I, my parents were away for a few days, and I was kind of fending for myself in terms of, you know, eating. So mm. I... <laughs> I went to this Chinese restaurant and, and at that point I, you know, I'm still living at home, which I mean, I still am now, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, I, I had a bunch of money squirreled away because I, you know, my expenses are pretty low. My student loans hadn't kicked in yet. Like I was just working and really not spending anything. So I went to this chi- the best Chinese restaurant in town and bought like everything off the menu that I wanted. Hell yes. I, I spent like $70 on oh Chinese my food God. <laughs> and then brought it. Well, I brought it all home and it was like, it was like four days worth of leftovers. That's fair. Yeah. So it was like, I'm just going to, yep. It's amazing. This it is was, it for the next couple of days. I was like, this is the height of luxury. <laughs> <laughs> the height of luxury. This guy. <laughs> yep. That's it, man. It doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> so, Steve. Yes, love. I heard this question on on an Oni plays. Our, our, oh, our okay. supple boy Chris. Uh, uh, the boy. And I feel like it would be a good topic for us. A good question. Right. Mm-hmm. So, if they were to bring a video game character into the real world, mm-hmm. which one do you think? Not like jokingly or because of popularity of the game. Which what what character do you think could become president of the United States? Oh shit. That's kind of cool. That's a good question. I like that. It is. Uh, If you have an answer, go ahead, because I definitely have to think about mine. So I have one for now that I think Mm -hmm. would be a really good candidate. And if Mm -hmm. he did good PR, he'd be in. And that's our our little tin man George from Halo Reach. I think he'd be a good president. Yeah, okay. He's super nice. He loves the human race because he fights for it on another planet mm-hmm. he's very personable <laughs> he's got the the whole that that accent that charming accent i don't know what it is mm-hmm. i guess he's hispanic i'd assume oh no he's uh, hungarian yes yep my bad my bad i just assume because of the name jorge george yep. my bad <laughs> george. never assume i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> but i think he i think he could get it i was thinking carter initially because he's the leader and it's like oh default he's the leader but the more i think about it yeah. carter's kind of a bitch he has no personality. Yeah, literally. All. Like, people like would initially be like, oh, he's con- he's fine. And then they'd be like, well, he kind of sucks. Who else we got? Mm-hmm. Whereas George is just charming. He's like, oh, my, uh, your reach is my life. And it's like, yep. <laughs> Thank you, George. <laughs> just replace reach with earth. And there you go. That'd be, that'd be earth president oh, George. So th- this is might be a little bit of a stretch, but da- but just stay with me on this one. I'm listening. Um, I-, I, think, I think Mega Man X from from the Mega Man X 
games mm-hmm. could be a really good president. Not zero. Obviously, he's like a robot, so like you know, it would, be, <laughs> it would be a little bit of an adjustment for people. But I think he's he's very noble, and he's like really he's he's kind of almost a pacifist toward the end of the series Mm. um he's definitely super into like everyone's right to to like self-determination and um he's he's, he embodies like peace and justice and whatnot uh but he's also willing to go out and kick some ass in order to maintain the peace yeah yeah um he kind of has that resolve to him so he's definitely like a noble strong kind of character he's Mm. got a he's got a strong heart so I think he'd have like the perseverance and I think his platform would actually be pretty decent. He could run on a platform of pacifism and equality and and people would buy into that. And but then at the same time if god forbid it ever came to like war between the United States and another pew, country, pew, I don't I don't think he would hesitate to a lead the country to victory and b join the fighting himself. <laughs> He'd be like jump um, a shooting. Yeah, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be awful to have a super soldier you know, in in the sense of you know this robot that that kicks so much ass yeah see in this show i was thinking the master chief maybe but then it's like he doesn't talk enough i don't think I don't he'd think have he the would PR. have any i don't think he would have any interest in being president either that too i don't think he, I don't, yeah he wouldn't care yeah he would just be like whatever it's fine he'd be like uh, i need a weapon he'd be like what yeah. <laughs> me when i need a weapon, need a weapon. <laughs> this is definitely me when i need a weapon <laughs> <laughs> I think initially, uh, though, I think he'd be very popular initially because people are like, oh, the Master Chief, like, he's an army man. He's got to be good. The and then, Master like, Queef. the more they found out how little he spoke and, like, little he probably did outside of, like, training and stuff, they'd be like, all mm-hmm. right, well, what's he going to do once he's up there? Nothing. Maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> but let's be real. There's only one person that could actually lead the country. And his whole platform would be off of one quote. Are you ready for the quote, Steve? I'm ready. I'm ready. Whoa. <laughs> That's wow. it, right there. Crash Bandiflute. Yeah. <laughs> Crash Bandiflute. Spyro could be a good one if he wasn't a dragon. He's pretty. He, he's a little too naive, though, probably. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, so Brian, mm. what what do you think is the next game or game series that should get a remaster? When when the PS5 and the Xbox Series S come out. Get a remaster. Hmm. Mm-hmm. If you have an answer, go ahead. Uh that's that's tough because I know I I mean obviously I'd love to see Mass Effect get the, the that trilogy get a remaster, but it's not so old that I think a remaster would be necessary. Yeah. I think it would be like uh oh, we just updated the graphics, here you go. <laughs> like That's fair. Um, yeah. Boy, that's tough. I mean, obviously we need a we need a Pokemon Gen Four on the Switch. I was gonna say, see that I was gonna say Pokemon, but you said when PS Five and stuff, and I was like, well, I can't really, yeah, because it's not gonna be on enough. that console. So I was like, well, I don't know if that would count. I would actually love to see Ape Escape get a remaster. I never played. I it. really liked that game, and I think. Uh, I think it would be really fun to play it in, like, modern graphics and all that shit. Yeah. See, I have an answer. The issue is that it's already technically been done, so, like... Because I'd love to see literally the same concept and gameplay, like, literally everything the same of the original Star Wars Battlefronts, but not by EA, so it's not multiplayer only, basically. Yeah, so it's not, like, bad. Yeah, like, I would adore... Oh, I'd adore that so much, but... Mm -hmm. Oh, I'd love to see the Resistance series redone. Resistance is really fun. That could be cool. I I had a lot of fun with the... I only played one of the games. I played Resistance 3. But it was just... Even though the story wasn't fantastic, the alien designs were really cool. The environments were really somber and unique. But, like, Mm -hmm. it had such a grand scale to it. And I... That's, like, one of my biggest things is, like, I love feeling small in a game world. Yeah. So, like, that... uh, That was great. Yeah. That'd be a fun series. Nice. Trying to look through games I have on my wall here. Mm Mm-hmm. (laughs) <laughs> well I, I mean actually not even jokingly halo 3 would be cool i just want halo 3 to have like halo 2 graphics with the halo 2 anniversary graphics with a uh, blur studios cutscenes because that would yes that would make me very I, excited I like blur is such an amazing they did the i didn't know this they did the cutscenes for call of duty modern warfare oh really which is why the game looks phenomenal 
Yep, I was gonna say <laughs> they sound like they know what they're doing. They're an incredible studio. I wish like I had money. To, I, like, I, if they have like a page or something, and I had money, I would definitely donate them like fifty bucks or something, be like, just to go. be like you're you guys. Amazing. Well, they did, they did the original Halo Wars cutscenes, and I thought those were live action back in like two thousand nine when it came out or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like they're an incredible company, and I would love to see them do more and more and more and more and more and more. <laughs> I'd love to see a Halo movie from them. That would be so fun. Yes, dude. Do you see? There's I I sent you this, but apparently there's a Borderlands movie in the works. Yeah, I don't know about that. I feel like there's gonna be some stupid love interest and. Oh, I feel like it's gonna be pretty bad too. But yeah. I'm gonna ha- I'm gonna see it. Oh like, yeah, I'm gonna watch it. The only love interest I would take is Maya and Krieg, just because it's established in the lore. That's oh, it. that would be amazing. That, that would be, be so fun. Sweet. But like, I don't know how they'd capture the the chaos that is Borderlands. You know. Yeah. Especially if it's going to be, film. especially if it's, it's going to be, be live action, I, which I don't know if it's going to be, but it's probably going to be live action. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how they would capture the, the quickness of the, the actual game without it mm-hmm. feeling ugly. I don't I know. I feel you. We'll see. We'll see. I'll watch well, we, it. We should go see it when it comes out. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm sure it won't be out till like 2021, but. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but yeah, definitely go see it. Well, well loves, la- ladies and germs, <laughs> <laughs> we gotta come up <laughs> with a name for our like ten we, listeners because oh, like the, the grumps have the grumpets or whatever. What are they, they called? The, our the lovelies. lovelies. Yeah, they have the lovelies, dude. They um they've actually been having a write-in contest on Chris Porter's podcast mm. of what they should call the fans. <laughs> like Perfect. the last like five or six, the five or six most recent episodes, mm-hmm. which I've listened to because my phone will download them without telling me. Yeah, and just, I'll just like, Oh, look, a new episode. And I'll just <laughs> can play it oh where did that come from i won't notice that it's been out of the fucking order yeah, yeah, yeah. that it was supposed to be in so they've been like taking suggestions from their audience of what they should call <laughs> what they should call the fucking uh audience ah god damn it <clears throat> let's call ours nugs for now dude oh uh, dude well nugs <laughs> it's well, been nugs. a grand old time uh we this had a one, nice time chatting with you not as heavily based on video games but we still got some in there um, we we have been chilling and whatnot. Yeah, I'm hopefully. working a new job, so my time is a little. I was about to say, right hopefully, now. we sounded energetic enough to be entertaining. I yes. think we did pretty all right. Yes. If you have any suggestions about what we should call you, yeah. <laughs> Unless you like to... nugs, if you like nugs, don't don't answer. I like nugs. I think nugs <laughs> might work. <laughs> it's but fun. In the event that it doesn't. You can reach out to us at the heck and call podcast at gmail dot com on Twitter at the heck and call. Uh, or, I mean, pretty much everyone listening to this knows one of us. <laughs> so far, yeah, at, you're not at, wrong. At this point, right. Yeah. So just reach out to one of us and be like, hey, you should call us the, uh, 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 uh Swag dick flags. daisies or whatever. That's Swag too. flags. The dick <laughs> daisies. There we go. Um, I love the swag daisies. The yes. dick flags. Dick flags. Dick flags. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, we'll see y'all next week. Hopefully you have a grand old week, and we'll, yes. we'll caress your ears yet again. And 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 us also, it, maybe. Cat, yes. <laughs> Sick. Uh, All right. <laughs> Goodbye, well, friends. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for listening to this episode of the Heck and Call. Thanks to Rachel Cody for designing our killer cover art and jingle. The link to her business Insta is in the description if you need music or art done. The Heck and Call can be found on all major podcast platforms, as well as YouTube and Twitter at T-H-E-H-E-C-K-I-N-C-A-L-L. We'll be back next week with more Heck and Good Calls. So until then, this is Steve, signing off. Always the Heck and Call. Always the